life, wisdom. I've spent the last few days watching YouTube videos about people who weigh three and 400, even 800 pounds. It's no secret that America is getting fatter. It's estimated that 64% of Americans are overweight, with about half of those being clinically obese. Even childhood obesity is skyrocketing, and now one in three children is overweight. So clearly, most of us are struggling with weight gain. And we're struggling against a food industry that seems dedicated to selling us more crappy foods. So recently we did a video recommending that people eat more like our grandparents ate when they were our age. And in this video, I want to tell you how. A quick look at obesity rates in this country might help explain why we would recommend that we eat more like our grandparents. Prior to the 1950s, less than 10% of Americans were obese, and that rate increased steadily until the 1980s when we saw a pretty steep increase in obesity. At this point, the obesity rate is three times higher than it was just 50 years ago. So what's so different about the way that grandma ate when she was our age and the way we're eating now? Let's take a look. Grandma ate real food that was prepared in a kitchen. But most modern processed foods are actually created in a laboratory by scientists. A quick look at the back of a food label will tell you whether that food is made of food or is made of chemicals. Things like monosodium glutamate, high fructose corn syrup, polydimethyl siloxane, brominated vegetable oil, EDTA, TBHQ. Most of these chemicals didn't even exist when your grandma was your age. Now this rules out all the fast food, the processed food, junk foods, just add water, instant meals, or microwave meals. But it doesn't necessarily rule out bread, pasta, hamburgers, pizza, french fries, or any of the foods that you really want to eat. You just have to make sure that they're actually made of real foods and were prepared in a kitchen, rather than in a laboratory by scientists. Grandma's food mostly came from her own backyard, or maybe her neighbor's backyard. But most modern foods travel anywhere from 1,300 to 5,000 miles from the farm to your table. Grandma may have every once in a while gotten to enjoy some food that someone brought to her, or maybe the milkman had to travel 30 or 40 miles to make his delivery. But most modern foods are traveling significantly larger distances, and most people aren't eating foods that were grown locally. In 1870, 100% of the apples consumed in Iowa were grown in Iowa. But in 1999, only 15% of the apples consumed were in Iowa were actually grown in Iowa. The nutritional content of a food decreases over time and it decreases significantly when foods travel a significantly long distance. In many cases, chemicals are even used to preserve the foods. Civil engineers use the term food miles to describe how this mass transportation of food affects the environment and our energy usage. Your best bet is to try as much as you can to eat locally grown foods. And depending on where you live, this can be somewhat difficult. The website localharvest.org will actually let you search for farmer's markets by zip code. An other option would be growing your own food or even starting shared community gardens in your city. Grandma's food came out of her oven. Or maybe she ate it right out of the dirt. But most modern processed foods come out of drive through windows, cardboard boxes, plastic wrap, or even electronic snack dispensing robots. Close to 100% of the food that grandma ate when she was your age, she actually had to cook and prepare herself. Maybe she was lucky enough to have someone else do the cooking, but the point is that if most of the food you're eating is coming out of a microwave or a plastic container and you're not feeling particularly vibrant and healthy, then that could be your problem. And if your mouth is gaping open at the thought of having to actually cook, then you need to snap out of it. 
Millions of people are doing it right now, and most of them aren't as fat as we are. And millions of people have survived exclusively on cooking their own food before us, so just suck it up. Grandma wasn't exposed to hundreds of food advertisements day after day. But we endure temptation after temptation every time we turn on the TV, walk down the street, or even go out to a ball game. Next time you're watching TV, count how many commercials you see for junk foods or restaurants, and pay attention to what kind of foods they're featuring in those advertisements. Chances are most of those foods didn't even exist when your grandma was your age. Once I started becoming aware of how relentless their marketing was and how much they assumed that I would just be a good little overeating consumer, it became a lot easier for me to recognize those temptations and consciously divert my attention. Grandma only ate when she was hungry or when she could afford food depending on her situation. But in 2000, Americans were eating an average of 500 calories more than they were eating in the 1960s. And that fact alone can explain the obesity epidemic. But why are we eating so much more food? Of course, there are a lot of different factors, like the temptations I mentioned earlier. But we should also remember that junk and processed foods are full of empty calories. And that means these are calories that turn straight into fat, but they're not going to fill you up, they're not going to leave you satisfied, and you're going to be hungry again pretty shortly after eating them. Until only a few decades ago, food was grown and supplied by people. Hundreds of thousands of them. But most modern foods are actually manufactured by machines or grown on factory farms by small numbers of people. Since 1979, over 300,000 farmers have gone out of business. In 1980, it was estimated that 80% of the meat consumed in America was being produced by only four companies. And it's also been estimated that up to 90% of the foods found in grocery stores are produced by only 10 companies. In the 60s and 70s, Secretary of Agriculture Earl Butts orchestrated significant changes in federal farming subsidies and food manufacturing policies, all in an effort to boost U.S. production and income. The system ended up fueling large agribusiness producers at the expense of small farmers. Butts was also a supporter of chemical pesticides and chemical fertilizers. Perhaps it's presumptuous to link these significant changes in food production policies with the skyrocketing obesity rates only a decade later, but I'm going to do it anyway. Your best bet is to opt for local or organic foods as much as possible. Grandma got a workout preparing her food. Whether she was milking cows, churning butter, or working in the garden all day, she was burning a whole lot more calories than we do walking to and from the car or handing our credit card to the cashier. The farther back in time you go, the more physical labor was required just for everyday survival. Dishwashers, microwaves, and other modern conveniences are convenient, but the lack of physical exercise is certainly taking its toll. Whether you take up gardening or just try to cook more meals at home, there's an added bonus that you're going to be burning some calories in the process. Cooking at home can even be a fun family activity too, where you get the kids involved in helping you cook and even helping you clean. Grandma ate her food at a table. I'm being pretty presumptuous here because I don't really know where your grandma ate her food, but I do know that she didn't eat in a car or while sitting on a couch in front of a television or computer screen. It's likely that most households ate meals together, and chances are they actually sat at a table. The point here is to actually sit down and relax while you eat your meal. 
eating while you're stressed out or while you're multitasking or running errands can literally cause you to gain more weight. When you're stressed out, your body is releasing cortisol and cortisol inhibits digestion. So if you can actually sit down, relax, enjoy your meal, you're not only more likely to feel full and satisfied afterwards, but it's also going to help you digest that food better and it's going to contribute to you not being such a fat ass. Grandma was a meal planner and chances are she had more than just one mouth to feed. She was constantly in a state of preparing food and thinking of what she was gonna serve everybody. And she was probably kind of a ninja of meal planning. It became so subconscious that she really didn't even have to think about it that much. The point here is that most of us eat whatever we drive past or whatever we see. We have tons and tons of junk food at our beck and call anytime we want it. But grandma didn't have that. She just out of necessity prepared foods and people were a lot healthier because of it. So if you're horrified at the thought of putting meals together, just get over yourself and realize it's just not that big of a deal. Grandma ate vegetables, gosh darn it. But according to the USDA, less than 10% of the average American's caloric intake is coming from fruits and vegetables. In our video on the average American diet, we explain that 25% of the average caloric intake is coming from added fats. So these are things like margarine, processed, partially hydrogenated oils, and other foods which literally didn't even exist when your grandma was your age. It's also estimated that up to 17% of our caloric intake is coming from added sugar. So Americans are literally eating more sugar than fruits and vegetables combined. If there's one thing that you take from this video, it's to please, 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 please eat more vegetables. Many people say that they can't eat healthy because they just can't afford it. But I think that's a big load of bull. And in a future video, we're going to do the price comparison, fast foods versus the raw ingredients it would take to make them yourself. I personally don't eat very much meat, but it's not because of philosophical reasons. It's because modern factory farming methods makes really unhealthy meat. In a future video, I'm gonna talk more about factory farming and what's wrong with the meat we eat. If there's something that you'd like to see us make a video about, please leave me a comment and let me know what that is. Thank you so much for watching today. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up if you liked this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to friend Psyche Truth on Facebook. To see the original video where we recommended that people eat more like our grandparents did when they were our age, check out the video, A Diet That Really Works. How did Americans get so fat? To find out more, check out our video on the average American diet. If you've ever felt like you just can't resist junk foods, it could be because they're literally designed to be addictive. To find out more, check out our video on junk food addiction. To see my complete playlist of videos on weight loss, nutrition, and wellness, check out the ultimate Karina playlist.